Isn't it awesome to control a colorful lamp remotely with such round display using a rotary encoder? Today in this video, we are going to program this 2.1 round display which has ESP32-S3 microcontroller to publish MQTT packets to control a lamp that I have designed in one of my previous videos. We are going to measure the current of such hardware and take a look at its user interface design. We are going to deal with round shapes today, so without further ado, let's put the show on the road. Alright, so here's the hardware that we are going to use uh, during this tutorial. Uh, so this is a 2.1 inch uh, round display uh, from VIEW Display, a Chinese company that's specified in uh, LCD manufacturing. And this is the back of the display. <clears throat> it actually has a, a rotary encoder uh, that can rotate li like this. And also it has a button like this that can be used for user interface. And this is the uh, USB connector. So this is a 3D printed case in order to cover the back of the display. I've actually recorded the assembly process of it. I'm going to share it uh, soon. So stay tuned for that. So now I'm going to power it up using a USB cable. So the USB is connected to my power supply. I will show you the power consumption uh, of this device uh, in a minute after powering it up. So here you can see the approximate dimension uh, of this product. So now let's power it up. I've actually programmed it. So this board has uh, ESP32 S3 that's interfacing a 2.1 inch display uh, with resolution of 480-480 pixels. So now I'm going to power it up to show you the interface that I have designed. So this is going to be like this. Let's power it up. Yeah. So here you can see this switch that shows the Wi-Fi connection. Uh, and this one shows the MQTT broker connection as well. So after a few seconds, you see that uh, my device, the ESP32 S3, has connected to my MQTT broker that's running on a Raspberry Pi. So right now, uh, the ESP32 will send data uh, to an MQTT server where I have another device, an addressable LED device, it's actually, I will show it to you in a minute, uh, how the whole thing works on action. But first I will show you and explain to you the user interface that I've designed. So when rotating the uh, rotary encoder like this, so currently uh, the ESP32 is sending the color data to my other device over MQTT. Uh, and I can turn on and off uh, the lamp that I am controlling wirelessly using this uh, button over here you can see you can see here that I'm showing the uh, lamp state so now it's off and now it's on so right now uh, you can see that I'm actually controlling the color which is the uh, hue value of the color I can change that by holding the back button uh, pressed for uh, three seconds and now I can control the saturation uh, of the color. So the RGB color is controlled by the hue, saturation, and the uh, brightness value. So this will show how intense uh, the color is. So by going up to this point, uh, the color will be uh, completely white. And when I rotate it this way, it's going to be uh, some green color. And if I hold the back button pressed again, now I will be able to control the brightness uh, of the lamp, like this. And I can go back to uh, hue control by holding it pressed for 3 seconds and now I can control the color of the lamp. So this is the user interface design that I've worked on. I, I will show it to you how it works uh, on action in a minute. I will also discuss the firmware that is uh, running on the ESP32 S3. But first, I would like to show you how much current this device uh, consumes. So this is the variable power supply from Miniware. Its code is MDP-P906. Uh, uh, this one, the one uh, in the back. And this one is the MDP-XP uh, display. These are actually two separate hardware. Uh, so now I can see the current consumption of my board. You can see it over here and you can see the graph. 
so I can change so I can change the time scale like that uh, anyways so uh, the screen can also move like that anyways uh, actually I want to show you uh, the control that I can do using this power supply so I can control both the voltage and limit the current and it also has a very good uh, voltage resolution so I can change uh, the voltage like that and I can control its output using this button yes you can see that the LCD has turned off and I can turn it on like this you can see the current consumption uh, as my device is getting connected to my Wi-Fi network and getting connected to my MQTT broker okay so now let me show you how the whole system uh, works together and how uh, this device is able to control my lamp uh, wirelessly over MQTT. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. If you are looking for producing or having your own engineering prototype, then GLC PCB is your correct destination for cost effective printed circuit boards and 3D printed mechanical parts. All you need to do is to upload your design on their website to make your order and they will make it real for you within days. And you can track the entire process until your order is in your hands. They also have special discount on multi-layer PCB manufacturing, so don't miss the chance. Check for more details in the link in the video description. Okay, so this is the lamp that I've talked about. Uh, it has ESP32C3, it's subscribed to the MQTT broker that I've talked about and now I'm going to control it using the round display that we have seen. Uh, and here's the round display that we have. So we have it connected to Wi-Fi and MQTT uh, broker. So now I'm going to turn it on using the uh, back button like this. And now I'm going to control its color using the rotary encoder just like that okay so right now i can uh, also change the uh, data mode by holding the back button pressed and now i can control the saturation data you can see when turning it to the right the lamp uh, turns to white so now it's completely white if i turn it this way i have more intense color and now i can control the uh, brightness of the LED by going to this mode so now I can control the brightness of the LED just like that and I can go back to the uh, hue mode like this and now you can see that I can change the color just like this okay so now it's time to jump into the firmware part and see how the whole thing has been done alright so here's the firmware running on the ESP32S3 uh, on the 2.1 inch uh, round display uh, so this is my main where I have all my free artless tasks uh, initialized uh, so I'm going to discuss them I'm not going to go into details because I already have this firmware uh, on my github repository I will share the link in the uh, video description so first of all here we have the display configuration this is actually has two parts one is uh, initializing the display driver and then integrating the uh, LVGL library uh, to run with this display so the display driver that we have is GC 9503CV around display so uh, if we look into that we will see that uh, all the necessary data pins HSync, VSync uh, and all the related hardware uh, is done over here and of course after that we see all the necessary parts related to LVGL uh, initialization uh, are done over here uh, so LVGL library is necessary for driving uh, the user interface here I have used Squareline Studio that gives the source code for the user interface uh, I'm, I'm planning actually to cover the user interface part in the upcoming tutorials so stay tuned for that let's get back to our code actually I've already done a, a detailed uh, screen initialization process in my previous tutorials uh, so you can have a look into that I will put related links in the video description so I'm not going into details so after completing the display configuration I'm 
initializing the necessary uh, handlers uh, for my firmware so here i have the uh, lamp handler that is going to carry out the necessary color information for the uh, lamp so here i have brightness saturation uh, i have the screen mode whether it's going to control uh, the color saturation or brightness so we'll see how these uh, are going to get modified depending on the user interface after that, I have the uh, software timer initialization. Here, here I have the GPIO interrupt initialization. I'm initializing the back button uh, as uh, interrupt. So I don't keep reading the GPIO state uh, of the back button. Of course, this is uh, way more efficient. And this is actually a button library that I've worked on before. So uh, this will keep track of the uh, button action, whether it is one single click uh, or it's a hold and press event. So I can do more than one action using one single button. And we have seen that in the first demonstration. So here and after that, I'm initializing the rotary encoder. Uh, as you may know that ESP32 has a dedicated uh, peripheral which is called PCNT. This is going to count the pulse generated by the rotor encoder and these are the pins uh, of the rotor encoder. I've actually discussed these peripherals uh, in details also in a previous tutorial. Uh, and after that my free RTOS task initialization start. So you will see that the first task is related to wireless uh, initialization. So here I'm connected to the uh, Wi-Fi network that I have. Of course, I have uh, my own uh, SSID and password credentials. Uh, and I'm running this task uh, on the uh, core number zero. So the Wi-Fi gets handled in a separate core and my application runs on a separate core you will see that this is the only task that runs on core zero this is more efficient uh, and this is the best use of dual core uh, feature of esp32 s3 actually i forgot to mention uh, this uh, main encoder uh, callback so at encoder rotation event uh, this function will be called so the no position will carry whether the rotation is done uh, clockwise or counterclockwise and depending on that the value of the color saturation brightness uh, is going to get modified of course the value that is going to be modified depends on the uh, control mode so after modifying the related data the user interface gets updated over here <clears throat> so here you can see that the lamp handler uh, is sent completely to the, to the user interface and after that, the lamp related data will be sent over MQTT using this function. So here we see that uh, the color data is put inside this string and then it's published over MQTT data uh, to this MQTT topic. So here I'm actually uh, executing this function after a delay of 40 milliseconds. Okay, so we have talked about the Wi-Fi MQTT uh, initialization task. Here we have the encoder handler task where all the uh, encoder related uh, data is processed uh, and then the encoder callback gets executed when any action uh, is done. The LVGL timer needs to run uh, continuously in order to keep the display uh, refreshed. Here we have the MQTT message parser where all the data received or MQTT gets parsed but in this uh, example there is no data being received or MQTT I may use this in the future so this is the main system timer where uh, I have the uh, system tick uh, gets incremented after each task call uh, which is 10 milliseconds so this is necessary for every function that uses the software timer and finally we have the event handler task where i have button debounce function in order to smooth out any noise uh, related to the mechanical button so if we have a look at the uh, button callback we have uh, registered over here so this function will get executed uh, after the debounce uh, is done so let's have a look at it so i have here two actions uh, whether it is button click or button long press so at button click i'm changing the state of the lamp in order to turn it on or off uh, and of course after this the mqtt publish is done in order to uh, change the state of the lamp uh, and if we have a look here on the long press we have seen that when uh, keeping the button pressed for around three seconds the mode of the screen changes in order to change some different data so when we need to move from 
uh, lamp uh, color saturation to brightness this is necessary to be done this actually uh, is necessary to be done uh, and notice that here we are not publishing any data to MQTT because this does not affect the lamp uh, and this is actually necessary only when changing anything remotely so here I have all uh, of the necessary topics that I have that are related to MQTT and I have them uh, registered uh, this is where I am running home bridge uh, app so here's the lamp that we were controlling and here are all the topics that I have been using uh, to modify and control uh, the lamp remotely this actually brings me to the end of this tutorial uh, I have actually shared all the content related to this uh, project uh, on my github repository so you can have a look at it uh, develop it uh, I hope that you have learned something new in this tutorial so share this video among your friends and tell them about Useworktronics. See you in the upcoming tutorials and bye bye.